that is showing. Anthony. Um, I have the yes. um, MOU. Like to call to order the regular city council meeting for Riviera Beach, December 4, 2019, 6.03 p.m. Madam Roll Call. Mayor Ronnie Felder. Here. Chairperson Kashamba Miller Anderson. Present. Chair Pro Tim Julia Botel. Here. Councilperson Trodrick McCoy. Here. Councilperson Shirley Lanier. Here. Councilperson Douglas Lawson. Assistant City Manager Deidre Jacobs. Here. City Clerk Claudine Anthony is present. Assistant City Attorney Lina Busby. Here. You may proceed. All right, we'll have a moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance led by Councilman McCoy. Pledge of allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for All right, do we have any additions or deletions or substitutions? Ms. Jacobs. Sure, um, the item dealing with the, um, item number three dealing with the abandonment of 13th Street, the city administration received a request to have that item removed from the agenda for this evening. All right, so item number three is being deleted. Um, the, because of the Palm Beach State College being present, um, item number five, the regular agenda item, will be moved to the beginning, right after awards and presentations. Um, so number five will be right after awards and presentations before public hearings, number two. Any other additions, deletions, or substitutions? Um, Madam Chair. Yes. Also, um, there may be, um, an opportunity for the item that was on the last agenda dealing with the um, holiday payments to the full-time and part-time city employees that was tabled. Um, if Councilperson Lanier would entertain having it put back on the agenda for this evening. All yes, right. Madam Chair. Okay, so we'll put that under the items table. Ms. Claudine, what number should that be? Make it seven. Madam Chair, we can either make it 3A or we can make it number seven. All right, it's number seven. All right, are there any disclosures by council? Madam Chair. Go ahead. I've had numerous meetings with the folks from Palm Beach State College. All right, and I've met with them a couple of times as well, and I think we had them at our, one of our retreats. Anyone else on any of the items on the agenda? All right, we have a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. Madam Clerk. Councilperson Lanier. Yes. Councilperson McCoy. Yes. Pro Tem Botel. Yes. Chair Miller Anderson. Yes. Unanimous vote. All right, members of the public shall be given a total of three minutes to speak on all items listed on the consent agenda. Any person who would like to speak on consent agenda items, please fill out a public comment card located on the table directly outside of the council chambers and give it to the staff prior to the adoption of the agenda. Do we have any consent agenda public comment cards? Madam Chair, we do not have any public comment cards on the consent agenda. The acceptance of public comment cards for the consent agenda is now closed. All right, all matters listed under this item, the consent agenda, are considered to be routine and action will be taken by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council person so request in which event the item will be removed from the general order of business and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. Do we have any council members that would like to remove something from the consent agenda? Motion to move consent forward, Madam Chair. All Second. right, Madam Clerk. Councilperson Lanier. Yes. Councilperson McCoy. Yes. Pro Tem Botel. Yes. Chair Miller Anderson. Yes. Unanimous vote. 
All right, any person who would like to speak on an agenda, a regular agenda item, please fill out a public comment card located on the table directly outside of the council chambers and give it to the staff prior to the item being presented to city council for discussion. Members of the public will be given three minutes to speak on each regular agenda item. In no event will anyone be allowed to submit a comment card and speak on an agenda item after the resolution is read or the item is considered. Okay, we don't have any unfinished business, no petitions and communications for filings, and we don't have any awards and presentations. Um, we'll have item number five. Resolution number 117-19, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Riviera Beach, Palm Beach County, Florida, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute a memorandum of understanding between the city of Riviera Beach and Palm Beach State College, establishing obligations between the two parties in the furtherance of facilitating the education of students, taking PBSC courses at city facilities, and providing for an effective date. Madam Chair, we do not have any public comment cards on this item. The acceptance of public comment cards on this item is now closed. All right, we have a motion. So moved. Second. All right. Ms. Busby. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Chair. Will you be speaking on this item? <laughs> yeah, okay. Good evening, Chair and evening. members of the City Council. This is a memorandum of understanding between Palm Beach State College, um, specifically the Palm Beach Gardens campus and the city of Riviera Beach. And this is establishing between um, the city and Palm Beach State College a um, certain understanding in which obligations will be met to further the mutual goal of facilitating the education of students taking Palm Beach State College classes or courses here at Riviera Beach facilities. And Palm Beach State College is actually present today and would like to give um, a recap or, uh, of what um, sort of um, services they are going to provide to the city and, and also they um, wanted to sign the agreement or after there is a vote. Okay, please come up. Thank you, Madam Chair, um, uh, Chair Pro Tem Patel, and members of the City Council. I'm Ava Parker, President of Palm Beach State College, and I stand here with Dr. Coleman Farrell, who is the Provost and Student Dean at the Palm Beach Gardens campus. Uh, we certainly are delighted to have this opportunity to extend our services to your residents. You know, we see it as our responsibility as the public college in our county to ensure that we have opportunities that are available for all of our residents. And if it turns out that residents can best be served in their home communities that's closer to them than any, in, than any of our campuses, and certainly we are so um, delighted to have the opportunity to provide those services. So um, on behalf of the college, I'm proud to stand here as a president and to say that since I've been here, this is the first such memorandum of understanding that we've signed, uh, which certainly is a, a, a demonstration of our commitment to our community and to folks to ensure that they have the skills that it takes to become gainfully employed in our community. I'd like to now have Dr. Coleman Farrell come and talk to you a little bit about the terms of the agreement. Okay. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Indeed, I am delighted on behalf of our Palm Beach Gardens campus to um, be here today. I think that this is a momentous occasion with regards to the partnership that we are bringing to our local community. I am homegrown. I am a city resident of Riviera Beach, Florida, and I am absolutely excited to be able to say that, yes. yes. We are excited to be offering um, business operations uh, specialist programming, uh, college credit certificates, as well as additional degrees and certificates right here in our backyard at the Public Works Building. I firmly believe that it is important that we keep the community in the community college. And one way that we can do that is by providing what I call the community connect. And the way to connect to the community is to not have that expectation that the community is always going to come to us. I believe that this is an occasion that symbolizes us bringing advanced higher education to our community. So I am delighted to be here this evening. The best is yet to come. 
Let's keep the vision alive for our citizens and the residents of Riviera Beach. We thank you so much for this partnership and this evening. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Thank you so much. We definitely appreciate the partnership. And I know Dr. Botel would like to chime in. She has been trying to make sure that this program took off, and so I will allow her Thank to say you, what Madam she Chair. needs to say. I do want to say to those people watching at home, on Tuesday of next week, which is the 10th of December at 6 o'clock, right over there in your backyard at the Public Works, will be your last chance to come register for these classes, and they are free. Free is good. If you qualify for assistance, we can get you 12 credits free, including your books, tuition, everything it's right there I'm not going to drive you there myself <laughs> but I encourage you to get in your cars and go over there so we'll be having a little soiree over there on Tuesday next week the 10th it'll be their last opportunity to register for these wonderful business specialist courses which is an entry into business and those businesses that we've been working with we're getting them to promise that if you have that certificate from Palm Beach State College we'll at least give you an interview so it's a great opportunity for people and thank you both for being here thank you to all the college people for being here this evening appreciate yes. it absolutely um, do we have any other comments from the board do we have public comments on this item no madam chair all right well, we thank you all so much. We'll make sure that we get, I believe, uh, Ms. Busby, we'll have it come around at some point after we've done our vote, and then you will get that to them, correct? Yes, Chair. Okay. Thank you all so much, and we appreciate you all starting off with Riviera Beach as your, Absolutely. your, your beginning. You're the model. Of course. Of course. Thank you all so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. No questions, comments from the board? Madam Clerk? Councilperson Lanier. Yes. Councilperson McCoy. Yes. Pro Tem Botel. Yes. Chair Miller Anderson. Yes. Unanimous vote. All right. Regular agenda item, item number four. Madam Chair, we need to do item number two. Did I skip something? Yes, yeah, Madam Chair. Been, which one? Item, item number two. two. We removed item number three. Oh, sorry, too. Yes, I, I don't have my glasses. I'm going to apologize right now. I don't have my computer or my glasses, so I'm just a mess up here right now. So I did get an agenda, so <laughs> bear with me. Go ahead. Computer? Item number two. I, I'll, I'll make, I'll, okay. Item number two, public Re hearings. Resolution number 115-19, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Riviera Beach, Palm Beach County, Florida. Approving an application from Inner City Youth Golfers, Inc. requesting a site plan approval to construct a single-story, 3,602-square-foot Inner City Youth Learning Center and Golf Museum on vacant land, totaling approximately 0.315 acres, located at 125 West 13th Street, identified by multiple parcel control numbers north of West 12th Street, south of West 13th Street, and west of Avenue E and providing an effective date. Madam Chair, we do have public comment cards on this item. The acceptance of public comment cards on this item is now closed. All right. We have a motion. So moved. Second. All right. Ms. Jacobs. Um, Madam Chair, Mr. Gagnon is here to present item number two. All right. Mr. Gagnon. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Honorable Mayor, City Chair, City Council. Uh, my name is Jeff Gagnon, Acting Director of Development Services for the City. Uh, as read into the record, you have a site plan application before you for the inner city youth golfers, uh, which is requesting to construct a 36,000 square foot uh, learning center and museum. Uh, the location of this site is uh, just north of what I would consider New 13th Street, uh, south of West 13th Street or Old West 13th Street. Uh, the zoning designation for this parcel is community facility as well as a future land use, which is consistent. Um, to zoom in a little closer on the subject site, uh, it is consistent of about five parcels which have a unity of title uh, that has brought them together uh, based on previous action uh, by the applicant. For the record, the site plan is attached to the resolution as Exhibit A. The landscape plan is attached as Exhibit B. Uh, the south side of the site here will, will border uh, the new West 13th Street, and they're adding to the existing landscape buffer. And um, it does seem like a very appealing project for the location. Um, also, what's worthwhile to note is the location of the Boys and Girls Club, which is just to the south of this site. Uh, so hopefully there's 
the potential for future connectivity between these two facilities. Um, so this is uh, an artistic rendering of the east elevation of the site. And the full elevation packet is included as Exhibit C, uh, which includes your south elevation, west elevation, north elevation, and east elevation as well. So city staff is recommending approval of this application, uh, which is staff number SP19-09. Uh, there are conditions of approval that are being recommended. Uh, the first condition of approval is for a two-year landscaping performance bond for 110% of the value of landscaping and irrigation. Uh, the second is construction and landscape improvements must be initiated within 18 months of the effective date of this resolution. The third is City Council authorizes city staff to approve future amendments to the site plan administratively, so long as the site plan does not deviate greater than 5% from the originally approved site plan. Uh, the next condition is that this development must receive final certificate of occupancy uh, from the city for all buildings and units approved within five years of approval of the adopting resolution. Our next condition is that all future advertising must state that the development is located within the city of Riviera Beach. Our next condition is once approved, this resolution shall supersede any previous site plan approval resolutions associated with this property, causing previous site plan approval resolutions to be null and void. And the final condition of approval is that prior to building permit approval, the applicant shall provide a drainage report sufficient to demonstrate compliance with um, the city's comprehensive plan infrastructure element policy 1.5.3, which is uh, provided in full within the resolution and uh, also within the presentation. Uh, so our applicant is here tonight uh, to answer any questions you may have, and I'm also present to answer any questions. Thank okay. you for your time. So we'll go to public comment and then come back to the board. Lloyd Brown, Fane Lozman. How you doing? Uh, my name Good is Lloyd evening. Brown, and I know you know, I always talk about I get off the subject. Hold on, all one, these I'm sorry, hold on one second. What, what kind of time are we doing here? Madam Chair, staff was directed to um, put the public notice along with the timer. Okay. So in order for us to achieve that, the IT department created something where we can have both of them up at the same time. So what do you see on the screen? Mr. Gagnon, if you can make that full screen for me, please. I need everybody to understand how that works because it's different. Okay. So the green is going to run out? The green is going to run out. That okay. will be your time. It's just that you will no longer see the numbers. Okay. That will give you this uh, down to the second. But it will still go three minutes and a buzzer will go off. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's start it back at three minutes so Mr. Lloyd Brown yeah. can have his full time. The only comment I really have is this. Every time we get some type of development, whether it's for the youth or whoever, Every time you get a development, those youth, they have parents. Those parents don't have the jobs of building those places. See, I, I, I can understand what you want to do, but I mean, you know, as you look at the economy on this side of the track, there's a lot of people don't have jobs and look like y'all not trying to find no jobs for them. So like you build this place, next thing you know, you got somebody else in there, just like on 8th Street, putting down the palm trees. How y'all talking about bringing things in, when you don't hire people, like they, you talk about, well, we got work programs on social media. Let me tell you what, I don't even watch this right here. So you talking about social media. The last time I tried to do something social media, I erased all my contacts. So don't tell me, and it's a lot of other people out there don't look at social media. And it's a lot more people out there that need to know about these places. Why don't you put a sign up? We're hiring locals. I mean, every time you look, there's somebody else and he's not like me that's working on these jobs. How do you think these young boys, you're talking about they rob these people? Well, those are the only people coming in the community working. And because they rob them, I mean, that's your fault too. I mean, because for one thing, if you give out jobs, instead of just letting these people come in, who's going to do these things for the city, and there's no black organization, there's no black men working, there's nothing like that, people get mad. And, you know, I know you all probably think that I come up here and I might say things that you don't like, but I really don't care because I know everything that I say, 
I don't really care if you like it or not, but I'm going to speak because that's the right I have under amendments. So I don't care what you think about what I say. Another person called me and said something about my statements. I really don't care about that either. You know, I put my pants on the same way any other guy in here put their pants on. And what I mean, you're going to have to do more with these new things coming to the city. You got to do more to hire more of the blacks that are standing around. If you want to stop the crime, give them a job. I mean, these youth, they got fathers who need work. I mean, just because you build a building for them, then you got some other person to come in and water the grass and do the landscape, and he bring his own people. We don't like that. And then another thing I got to say, I see that he's not here. I was going to answer his question that he asked me. He need to get up off his butt and go out there, and he'll find out what I'm finding out because that's not my job. If I was up Talking there in this place, golf, I'd do it. I'm not, I'm not getting off it. I see my time. No, you ain't got to tell me. I'm not getting off the subject. The point is, he's always talking about something that they're doing for people in the neighborhood and not. He need to get out there and find out what they need and find places that's going to hire the people out there that we have that will work. Thank you. Thank you, Lozman. Bing Lozman, Singer Island. Good evening. Hold on one second, Mr. Lozman. Are you, are you started it? Okay, Bing Lozman, back. Singer Island. Go ahead. There's a conflict. This gentleman here said it was 36,000 square feet when he made his public comment. The backup says 3,600 square feet. I'm not sure which one it is. Um, also, I didn't see anything about parking. I didn't see any type of parking uh, layout. I know that's very important that this going to be a this um, this facility. How, what, what are the rules relative to parking? Where are people going to park? Where are the setbacks for the parking spots relative to, to the street? There's a lot of things going on, and that's why the interim city manager. You need to find somebody who understands what they're doing, and we can't keep having an interim development director for years on end when his competency and the ability to, whether it's the presentation we did today, whether it's what went on at Stony Brook, uh, pulling red tags off units, whether it's targeting myself and Dan Taylor, why is this man still coming up here and making presentations? His competency, he's not competent to be running this golf. department. Well, I'm saying right here, right tonight, where is, he's got the square footage wrong, he didn't go over the parking, you know, just because he put some shiny pictures up there, where is the specifics? You know, where's the beef, as they used to say? I'm not impressed with this guy. Nobody I've talked around town is impressed with this guy. Why is he still the interim manager? Interim means a short time. It doesn't mean years and years and years on end. It means a short period of time. He's embarrassed the city. The golf center, Mr. Huh? Roseman. It's relative. I have the floor right now. Not you. Please stay on the I topic. have the floor, OK? It's relevant to this application that I do not have the confidence, and either should you, that this man is making this decision to bring this project here. Okay? That is something that you, as the final policymakers, need to consider what kind of decisions is coming out of this man that we can trust anything that he says. Given the Stony Brook scandal, given that those units were red tagged, and he coordinated getting those tags off of there. How can you trust anything he brings? Why did you suspend him, Mayor? You have the authority under the charter to suspend this man from doing his job. Why didn't you do it based on all the things that this guy's done lately? Why is he still coming up here with projects? Why don't you call him? Why don't you go down to the state attorney's office and look at the probable cause affidavit? Why don't you do your job to have oversight on department heads? That's why you were elected. OK, this man should not be coming up here at all making any presentations regarding any site plan approvals or doing anything. The mayor, you have a responsibility. If this, if this board here doesn't want to direct the city manager to say, hey, we, we can't be keep. Matter of fact, when they took office, I like to say back in March, you said there'd be no more interim managers. That was the number one priority. We're in December, nine months later, and this incompetent guy is still making presentations. You need Thank to do you, something Mr. about Lozman. this. Um, I do want to take the time to read the public notice out loud. Um, so could you please make that a little larger? Um, we have not had this up here before. Click on the, that, um, like the uh, magnifying glass down in the middle. 
a public notice, see if that works. So it says public notice in accordance with the chapter 12, 12-23 of the city's code of ordinances, any person disturb or disrupts any workshop or meeting held on city property shall see such action as determined and requested by the chairperson or majority of the board. Failure to do so is in violation of this section. Disturbing and disrupting actions includes offensive language, physical or threat of physical violence, repeated loud or boisterous behavior as determined by the chairperson or majority of the board. Any person failing to strictly heed such warnings immediately may be ejected from the meeting place for the duration of the meeting or for such lesser time as presiding officer or majority of the board may specify. And of course, as everyone knows, I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy to allow you to speak during your three minutes, not trying to referee anything that you're saying because you have that right. But I do wanna ask that we stay to the topic of whatever the agenda item is and make sure that we stay within our three minutes. We do have a new timer, but I'm gonna ask that everyone pays attention to the green when it goes out, please stop or wrap up your comments before it gets close to counting down. Thank you. Madam Chair, that concludes public comments. All right, any um, questions or would you all like to hear from the Golf Association organization? I have some questions. Okay, go ahead. Um, the first question I have is that I, I didn't see any of the backup, uh, the history of this project. I, this is my first time seeing the project uh, apparently it's been in the works for a while, but the backup it only has site plans. It doesn't have a history of the project and how it came to be about. All right. Mr. Um, Gagnon, could you come up and provide some information about, information about that? I, I can provide my best recollection of the history of the site. It may be best it for may the, be the applicant to mm -hmm. provide the history as that, far as from their perspective. That would be fine. Um, while, while the applicant is... <laughs> the applicant doesn't seem to want to come up, but maybe Danny or... Come on up, Mr. Malik, I know. Oh, you don't want to give any information? <laughs> well, we want to make sure everybody's comfortable with, you want to make a, you want a yes vote, not a no Let's vote. So <laughs> if they don't know, then you okay. probably get a no. <laughs> okay. Good evening. Can you pull the mic down a little bit, please? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, we have a new board, so it would probably do some good to kind of give my history. Council members, Malachi Knowles, founder of Inner City Youth Golfers Incorporated. I um, started golf when I was 10 years old at the Everglades Country Club as the Shag Boy. Uh, and I left here and went away and um, had, I think, a superfluous career, and then returned in 1993, retired. This is my hometown. With golf in my blood, I decided that my giving back, my wife and I, our giving back to this community would be through golf. We started our program in the year, oh, 2000, 1998, 1999 or so, after Dr. Horn rooked me into being a substitute teacher at JFK Middle School. <coughs> JFK Middle School, when she said, would you come and help at the school? I said, my arrangement would be there for, can I start my golf program in your school? She said, yes. I then became a substitute teacher and in the after school program began its first golf program in a, in a um, middle school in Palm Beach County. Ms. Lanier, from that point on, we continue to offer what we now call golf and education to our kids wherever we can and mostly uh, with our team who's here tonight, stand up team, my architect to the left, say your name. Danny Diaz. Danny Diaz. My board member. Board member. 
and one of our team members with ECF. We're simply here to show that we are on the move to making sure that the project is a success. I also founded the African American Golfers Hall of Fame and the African American Collegiate and Youth Golfers Hall of Fame. Both don't exist anywhere else other than in the city of Riviera Beach, based in Riviera Beach, for the United States of America. Please let us be clear about that. As a member of the Palm Beach County Sports Commission's Board of Directors, I know that with us bringing the museum to 13th Street as a part of our learning center, then I would have a permanent home instead of having our kids go from place to place on Saturday mornings uh, to learn golf, uh, we would have a permanent location. The question therefore is, have we established a relationship with the Boys and Girls Club? Certainly, I believe a new director took over on Monday and we, I have been in contact with him already. Emory Payne and I are good friends the Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity, it's over at Rogers. Rogers, uh, where the old, the, whatever the name of it is. Uh, so Emory and I are good friends, and uh, we spoke as late as today about establishing an MOU to make sure that our kids will have a, an established relationship right there, virtually across the street from our learning center. I don't know what else I need to say. All right. Um, Ms. Lanier? Yeah. Um, also, um, what, um, where are you with the funding of the project? We are within range of getting a loan for the project, but no bank will see us completely until we at least are able to walk in there and say we have site plan approval. We're going to build the building. <coughs> We are going to build a building with our money for this city. And what's the cost of it? It's going to be somewhere in the area of about seven, huh? About six hundred thirty-five thousand dollars of an investment of money, but I want to say um, the connectivity, and of course uh, the mayor and all of you all now have been involved in connecting the city. I've been connecting this city since I was at the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development and assisted in facilitating your getting this building where you are now. So uh, all I want to do is bring another product um, to the city to make the, the city, my mother who's deceased, proud. So what's your timetable for the, for the project? Given the fact that we will, will go through site plan approval, we're going to break ground early next year. But what was the 18 months I saw? You said eight, it was 18 months. That's our requirement per, I believe, am I right, Mr. Gagner? That's our requirement per him. We know what we're going to do because we think we are there. Oh, they're saying that you need 18, they're going to give you 18 months, but you're saying you'll be done before that. I didn't say that. I said we're going to break ground early this year. This year? 2019? I mean, I'm sorry, I apologize. 2020. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Go Madam ahead. Chair? Yes. Mr. Knowles, how many kids do you service? Oh, on a variation on Saturday mornings, we're up to 25 to 30 in seats. And uniquely, we are a parent child program. Parent child program. Are all these I kids. I say that because, Mr. Mayor, uh, and I, I don't want to throw first tee under the bus, but we have no relationship with them simply because one of the things they don't have that we do have is we have an education component. They do not. And in fact, uh, what we do is we use a lot of our golf tools to teach our kids uh, math, arithmetic, uh, reading, et cetera. And all these kids are golfers. You're teaching them golf. No, these kids are not golfers. Okay. These kids are from our community, et cetera. But you're teaching them golf. We're teaching them golf and, and the life skills that relate to golf. Okay. Pants up, belt on, 
no show me nothing, yes ma'am, please, thank you, etc. Once we can grab you in golf, we got you. Any other questions or comments? How much of the 635 have you raised? I'm not going to put that on the microphone. I'm sorry. I'm not going to put the, my dollar amount out publicly. I'll just trust me. I will. We will trust be building. You. I don't know you, sir. Well, thank you very much. But that's not something that I don't think is, is I, I'm, I'm not. That's, that's a Ma negotiable skill that you put out there. And once you start doing that, then, you know, I could be messing myself up with regard to to getting my future loans and my involvement with financial institutions, et cetera. Madam Chair. Yes. Are you asking for any money from the city? No, sir. Well, how, how, did, um, how, did, how did you come about with the land? Was it through the city? Uh, the city put the CRA, put the, put the property out as a part of, I don't know, some remnants program, um, properties that you want to dispose of. We bid on the property. We paid the money for the property. It's not Could a gift. Please step out with the phone, please. <clears throat> All right. Any other questions, Ms. Lanier? Uh, no, I think that's it for now. Mm -hmm. But I would still like to know how much money has been raised if we don't have a right to ask that. I don't understand that. No, you have the right to ask a uh, council person. But uh, I might answer you privately, but I'm not going to put it out on airways. All right, is that, let me ask, ask so is that amount um, tying in with the site plan approval for Mr. Gagnon? Gagnon? Hello? No? Okay. So for tonight, we're being asked no, to the, do it's, an it's approval. It's relevant to the development order approval and the resolution being considered from the staff perspective. Okay, all right, so hold on. So. They're looking for approval for the site plan. I understand your questioning, but it, I mean, if he's um, unwilling to, because of negotiating issues, um, if we have any other questions or comments, if not, so then have, we'll go I ahead have and. That question I wanted to answer, but he's not answering it, so we can okay. move on. All right. So. Madam Chair, yes. just a quick comment. Um, <clears throat> when Mr. Knowles says that he's teaching more than golf, I can personally attest to the fact that I have worked with him on a number of occasions now, and every child who gets anything from him has to say thank you and, <laughs> and has to ask by saying, please, sir. And he does a really good job of helping our kids um, understand the wider world and being ready to take on challenges. And I applaud the work that he's done with our kids. So thank you. And, and might I add, um, it appears as though we're going to lose Lone Pine, perhaps, right, to to some developer? Well, there has not been a okay, that's final good. decision. That's good then, because that. I, yeah. oof, Well, that's I'm not saying, up to us. We, we haven't had that conversation. Thank you very much, because we would therefore then lose uh, a golf facility completely in the city mm -hmm. that we use on those... Uh, on our Saturdays and sometimes our evenings when the kids are out of school. All right. Thank you. All right. We have Mr. No Mayor, we'd love to talk to you about uh, resurrecting the Mayor's Cup. We'll go ahead with the vote. Councilperson Lanier? No. Councilperson McCoy? Yes. Pro Tem Botel? Yes. Chair Miller Anderson? Yes. That motion is approved with Councilperson Lanier dissenting. Okay, thank you. Item number three has been deleted. Item number seven, items table, right? Are we going to four first? Hmm? Are we going to four? No, we go, we're, items table is next. Because we put number seven under items, ta items table. All right, so you need a motion to have it taken off of the table. Can you just say what it is exactly, Ms. Lina? <coughs> Is this, I'm sorry, is this the item regarding the gift to employees? Yes, it is. Okay. Okay. All right, so you need Ms. Um, Claudine. A heading. I don't have a heading for it, Madam Chair. Um, you have a heading for it? Sure, we, I don't have a heading, but I can, I can just draft one, so. Okay, so Madam Chair, we need to remove from the table the um, request for council to approve the city manager to give a 
$50 gift card to full-time employees and a $25 gift card to part-time employees um, in celebration of the holidays. All right, and you have a motion to take it off the table? Yes, and I think it's, it's supposed to be in lieu of a holiday party. Oh, yes, Madam Chair, is. yes it is. Yes. Yeah. Actually in lieu of, there were two holiday parties, normally Thanksgiving as well as Christmas. And we did have, well, we'll mention about the memo, if you can, Ms. Busby, just so it's on record. Um, but if we could have a motion to take yes, it off I the table. I make a motion to take it off the table, the discussion we had in regards to providing city employees with uh, gift cards for the holidays in lieu of holiday parties. Second. All right, Madam Clerk. Councilperson Lanier. Yes. Councilperson McCoy. Yes. Pro Tem Botel. Yes. Chair Miller Anderson. Yes. Unanimous vote. All right, so now we need a motion to um, have the discussion for this item. You want to say it again for the record? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I make a motion that we approve a holiday payment of $50 for full time employees and $25 for part time employees in the amount not exceeding the $25,000 and authorizes the finance director to. Managed funds available by Monday, November 25th, uh, 2019, but that doesn't work, so we're going to say December 25th, 2019. Second. All right. Um, if there is, because we did, we did put this out there earlier that we were going to possibly entertain this, so if there are people in the public that would like to um, put in a public comment card for this item at this time, you can do so. Um, we'll have Ms. Busby go ahead and provide us with that background information as well as the memo because when we left the last time we asked for the attorney to look into this so that we were okay and everybody was comfortable making sure it was okay for us to do so. Thank you, Chair. Yes, that's correct. And our office did uh, research that particular issue. We found that the town of Palm Beach Shores made a request um, a uh, short time ago for an advisory opinion to the Palm Beach County Commission on Ethics. And they asked whether the town could give December holiday gifts to town employees and uh, board volunteers. The Commission on Ethics um, offered its opinion that the Palm Beach uh, County Code of Ethics does not prohibit a municipality from giving holiday gifts to all of its employees and volunteers. Gifts given as an overall expression of appreciation are generally not prohibited by the ethics code unless the gift is solicited from a vendor or lobbyist or the value exceeds $100 and is given by a vendor or lobbyist um, of the public employer. So in summary, the ethics code does not prohibit the city from giving gifts to its employees and volunteer board members provided that the decision is transparently made and approved by the elected body at a public meeting. Okay. All right, do we have any comments or questions regarding this item? And we did not receive any public comment cards. No, Madam Chair, the acceptance of public comment cards on this item is now closed. All right, we'll go ahead and take a vote. Councilperson Lanier? Yes. Councilperson McCoy? Yes. Pro Tem Botel? Yes. Chair Miller Anderson? Yes. Unanimous vote. All right, regular agenda item number four. Resolution number 116-19, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Riviera Beach, Palm Beach County, Florida, authorizing the renewal of liability insurance coverage with Arthur J. Gallagher of Florida and authorizing the Director of Finance and Administrative Services to make payment from various city departmental accounts in the estimated amount of $3,681,012 for liability insurance and provide an effective date. Madam Chair, we do not have any public comment cards on this item. The acceptance of public comment cards on this item is now closed. All right, we have a motion. So moved. Second. All right, Ms. Jacobs. Um, Madam Chair, Marie Sullen, our city's risk manager, will be presenting this particular item. Good evening, Chair, Good evening. Council, Mayor. Um, as you know, for the past several years, uh, we have been um, implementing safety procedures, um, insurance practices, so the city would be well protected. And this particular item that's before you is our liability insurance, 
which is a self-insure um, protection package, which includes protection for our property, our liability, our auto, our workers' compensation, um, our cybersecurity, um, police officers, every item that you could possibly think when it comes to insurance. So this package basically is a protection, a self-protection package to ensure that we are protected in those particular lines. Today we have Eileen Bella, Area Vice President of Arthur J. Gallagher with us. If you would like, if you have some question with respect to the actual package being presented to you for your approval tonight. Go ahead, Chair. I have a question about, in, in our backup, it talks about cyber liability. Are we covered by the League of Cities for cyber intrusions? And does this replicate that, or is it not that same kind of coverage? We have a cyber package for specifically for the city of Riviera Beach. It's not through the League of Cities. The League of City has their own um, insurance policies, per se. We RFP for our <coughs> broker, and then our brokers, in turn, go out and receive bids and basically present those, um, those bids to us and then we present that to you all for your consideration. So we were covered the last time we were? We were covered, yes. And this will cover us to at least that extent? That is correct. As, as a matter of fact, we had a very good package. Good all right, do we have any comments, questions? Go Madam ahead. Chair. Go ahead. Uh, Ms. Helen, so being that this is a I guess an option that we're exercising on the original contract that covered three years. I believe it was from fiscal year 16 through 19, is that correct? The broker themselves, yes. What basically we do an RFP for our broker, which in turn the broker, just like health insurance, the broker goes out, look for the insurance policies for us, and then they present that and we would either accept, negotiate, and so on. Um, so in this particular term, we did an RFP previously, and the RFP was for three years with two additional amendments. And this particular item being brought to you is actually for the actual policies itself that our broker went out and looked into the market and the various markets, basically, to bring forth to us. Our current policies will expire on December 15. My question, Ms. Sullen, is, has any of the policies changed as far as the carriers that are providing, I guess, some specific coverage um, when we went out this time? This time we've had, um, we submitted, I believe, over 100 um, um, submittals, and I believe 22 um, bids came back. And then from there, we had some tweak into the policies for the betterment, not for, we didn't lose anything in that sense. We made sure that the package, we've had the appropriate coverages for the city. So my question is, did we change any carriers from three years ago to what we have, I guess, going forward for the next 24 months? Will any of our policies carriers change? As far, no, last year we had a change, but this year we received bids from the same carriers that we had previously. Okay, so actuarially and also from a perspective of claims and losses that we've filed in these three years, has there been any incremental costs? And I don't know how you compare three year term to a two year, um, I guess, renewal, but has there been any incremental costs or was there an analysis done to say for fiscal year 16, you know, this was our amount for insurance. Now for fiscal year 20, this is going to be our new amount. So was there any analysis done by, I guess, risk or by the broker to determine any incremental costs or marginal increases? There were incremental cost changes. It's in the actual backup that was put, um, that's been provided to you and um, also will we can put, um, provide that information to you during the presentation. Oh, you have a presentation? There is a presentation. If you... Well, I mean, I've seen 6%. Is that the only increase that I guess we can attribute to the changes in policy? Yes. OK. And if we're. But remember, we have different policies. So your property policy. 
Your property policy is a standalone policy. Your utility policy is a standalone policy. Your cyber policy is a standalone policy. And then you have your package policy, which protects the city council um, and also um, employer, employer liability, um, employer inju employee injuries, then you have your pollution policy, which is also a separate policy. So each of those policies are standalone. I think if you will allow us to do the presentation, that may help answer some of the questions you have. I did, yeah, that would be good. I didn't understand that we were having a presentation, but if that, if you can go ahead and allow her to do that, that would be good. Then we can come back to the questions. Good evening, Mayor, Chairperson, and City Council. Good I'm Eileen Abella with Arthur J. Gallagher and Company. We are the city's insurance brokers. So this just gives you an overall glance of who we are, Gallagher. Um, we have, we are an international broker. We are the fourth largest broker in the world. We have had a public sector um, practice group since 1999. We have been in the state of Florida for the past 35 years. And as you can see, we handled over 25 tri um, public sector clients in the Tri-County area. And um, there's a list of some of those. And in, in addition to providing the actual insurance policies, we also provide claims advocacy services as well as loss control services. So we were involved in the cyber liability um, recent claim. We also meet on a quarterly basis with the city administration, city attorneys, as well as your third party administrator and department heads to find ways to go ahead and mitigate any losses that the city has. Just to give you an idea, you were, taught, you were asking the question regarding costs from 2016 to, to date. So we are dealing with a lot of different types of policies as well as the insurance market over time. So what this slide shows you is the property insurance market as you are aware, since 2017 and the Harvey Irma Maria claims, the property market in particular has increased steadily and more so in this past 12 months. And it has also had an effect of the broader insurance market, especially in catastrophic prone areas. And this just depicts just the um, US disasters from um, hurricanes and other weather-related events that were over a billion dollars for the years 2017, 2018, and 2019. As far as the casualty market, the third-party liability market, which is your general liability, auto liability, um, public officials liability, police professional liability. This has been a pretty stable market for public sector clients. And where we see increases, it's basically due to rate adequacy, meaning what, when the insurance companies take a look at the city's losses and the individual risk, they're taking a look to find out where those losses are in comparison to what the premiums are that are being paid. And it is very much account specific. As far as the workers' compensation, this is another stable line. Um, unfortunately, this is something that is a line of insurance that one bad loss or one move can drastically shift the market. The excess workers' compensation market, just to give you an idea, the um, 
minimum retention that's seen is usually a million dollars for police and fire, and this is due to the presumption claims to heart and lung bill. And as you know, the cyber liability is um, increasing, and there's, this is due to a lot of increase in both ransomware and social phishing um, attacks by different companies, private and public, as well as the public sector. We are also seeing a tightening, particularly in public sector accounts, regardless of losses due to the heightened ransomware and attacks that have taken place across the country for governmental entities as, and, um, as well as due to the aging infrastructure of all public sector governments and their um, computer systems. As Marie said, we work with the city each year to come up with an established not to exceed cost with the budget, meeting with finance, risk management, and other city administrators. We market the coverage on behalf of the city and leverage our relationships to obtain the most cost-effective product that we can. Um, some of the things that we do in mitigating is taking a look at the city's losses to go ahead and provide the optimal um, amount of retention versus insurance. So that this, what this does is you avoid swapping dollars with the insurance company if you're able to retain the loss, the expected losses and then buy insurance for the unexpected losses. This just represents the markets that were approached in for the 2019 renewal and the results. On page eight, this shows your 2018 program structure. The gray boxes on the bottom represent the city's retention. That's the amount of loss that the city retains for each loss for each coverage line. And then the different colors represents the, where the carrier comes in to provide insurance on behalf of the city. The, in the pink on the left <coughs> represents um, your risk management program, your protected self-insurance program, and then all of the policies on the right is what we consider the ancillary lines, which is your property, your cyber environmental, boiling machinery, workplace violence. This is what we're looking at as a 2019 anticipated program structure. Some of the differences that you'll see on here, just as a, a high-level overview, after meeting with um, the city manager, finance and risk management, we made some dis the city made some decisions as respects where to have those retention levels as respects the program. And in doing that, it also got rid of this um, additional line of um, additional retention that the city takes. This is what we're looking at from year over year um, for the city's insurance programs. <laughs> Bless you, which you already had in your backup. And then this is going back to your question regarding what has happened over a period of time. If you take a look at this graph, it shows the program costs from 2011 to the projected for 2019. The green bar represents the actual insurance premiums that are paid to insurance carriers. And the blue represents the loss fund, the amount of loss that is funded for any losses the city may have during that, that um, insurance program year. So you can see while our insurance has gone up for the 2019 year, we are still well below where we were um, years ago. And in addition, it should be noted that this also includes additional insurance coverages that the city did not purchase uh, five years ago, 10 years ago, such as the emerging risks of cyber liability and workplace violence. This graph shows, this final graph shows the actual losses that the city has versus that blue graph that you saw in the last, which is the city's loss fund. 
So the city is funding this loss fund. This is the, the most that the city will pay in any one given year for all of those retentions that the city has within its program. And the difference between the green, which is the losses that are being paid by the city for each of these fund years versus the fund represents possible um, savings to the city for each program year based on their ability to prevent and mitigate the cost of any losses that it has. So that is our goal with risk management, both from a loss control standpoint and a claims advocacy standpoint, is to go ahead and control those losses. And that is where the city is able to um, realize the largest amount of savings. So again, going back, that's that blue area and anything that we can prevent or mitigate as far as losses brings down the ultimate total program cost for each of those years. So with that, I can take any questions. I know I went through it pretty quick if, there's, if I hopefully answered some of the questions you had, but happy to answer any others. Madam Chair. Yes, thank you. Um, I see that on the chart on page 10, it looks like our cost for the cyber went from 18569 in 2018-19 to 94000 Is that because of the attack we sustained? So this is, this is a couple of things. Um, this is for, we added, um, the city asked us to go out and look at additional coverages and higher limits of insurance. So this represents a much larger limit of insurance than the city previously had. And we have options from the current program all the way up to this amount at different levels of insurance. Um, so both from a limits and an enhanced coverage standpoint, um, that's where those differences are. So the actual increase for basically the same program, which would be due to both the loss as well as the current marketplace, is the difference between the first column and the second column for the cyber, the 18 to the 37,000. Thank you. Um, just to reiterate something that um, Marie said, we do go ahead and look at different insurance carriers each year, the, and we go ahead and we'll tweak the carriers based on the program. We've had no major changes in carriers. However, for example, in the property program, if we have a carrier who is an outlier who wants to charge a higher rate than the rest of the market, we will go ahead and replace it. This year, I think we had one, Westchester was switched over to Lords of London. You'll also see on the sports accident policy, which has gone down a couple thousand dollars, um, it, that was due to a change in carriers um, moving to Zurich Insurance, which is a very reputable, um, financially secure company as well. All right, anyone else? Madam Chair. Go ahead. Ms. Abella, were you here in 2016 when the RFP was originally done? I was working with Gallagher, but at the time I was not on the um, the service team that put together that RFP, and for my counterpart was who is Do not you, here today. Are you aware of how long you guys have been the uh, broker or agent of record for liability? It's been quite some time. I don't have that in front of me. Do you know? That? <coughs> yeah, well over ten years. Okay. Um, and the original RFP and the contract associated with the original RFP from 2016, it appears that the resolution cites um, that it can be renewed for one 24-month period. Did we decide to exercise the option of 12 months? Okay. And Ms. Sullen, I'm looking at the RFP from 2016, and I noticed that there was Brown and Brown, Al, uh, Arthur Gallagher, and Gehring Group. There was something unique, and I want to understand if this is what we know now as being MWBE, but there was a specific category called Qualified Business Participation, 
and none of the submitters got any points for that. What did that represent in 2016 um, when that RFP went out? Was that for minority and local participation? I'm not 100% sure it may have been for uh, minority participation, but um, I can't recall back to 2016 what the RFP, and I don't know if purchasing recall what the specific was, but I believe most of, on most RFPs that usually represent for a minority business, yes. Okay. And this was purely at staff's discretion to exercise a 12-month renewal as opposed to a 24-month renewal because I actually see it two different places. I've seen in the original RFP that the option was for 24 months, but in this resolution that we have before us, this contract is for 12 months. We, because we want to make sure we bring the item forth before you all in also, we've had a change in city manager. We want to make sure that it's evaluated on an annual basis versus automatically asking for the 24 renewal. So this is just something from the staff level where we just want to make sure on an annual basis that you automatically get to see every single <coughs> item um, instead of automatically renewing for the 24 months. And that condition of the commission, all of that remains the same, correct? That is correct, and that's most of it is by state statute. Is, is that that's correct, right, on the commission? Hey, on the, the, com the commission yeah. is based on... Can you come up to the microphone? Oh, microphone, please. Have her give, oh, give the sorry. microphone. Sorry. Our commission is based on the contract that was put in place in 2016 and remains in effect for any um, optional years that are taken by the city. Okay. Thank you. Just one comment, Madam Chair. Yeah. I, I think it's pretty straightforward. I just wanted to kind of get some questions answered, but I'm glad to see 12 months as opposed to 24 months, simply because I would hope that administration looks to put this out in 2020 to um, you know, go out for a new broker just so that we can allow you know, for competition in the market, and not only that, for minority participation, because <clears throat> so often, there are businesses in and around Riviera Beach or in Palm Beach County for that matter that don't get a option or a ability to compete because you know some of the the larger companies you know don't have local participation so I would certainly like to see at some point in 2020 we consider taking this back out for another new RFP all right Anyone I do want to make one comment. Um, in this particular account, there is a minority business on the account also um, who does all of our environmental services and all the issues we've had with the water intrusion and so on. It's a minority business that um, they've actually added to the account to assist us with that. But that's not a broker or agent, correct? That's correct. Okay. So, yeah, that's when I was referring to, I'm speaking of a broker or agent. Okay. But thank you for having local and minority participation, so. All right, anyone else? Go ahead. Madam Chair, I just wanted to um, emphasize to, to the public and to Mr. McCoy, um, city administration concurs with your thoughts. Okay. All right. Thank you, um, Madam Clerk. Councilperson Lanier. Yes. Councilperson McCoy. Yes. Pro Tem Botel. Yes. Chair Miller Anderson. Yes. Unanimous vote. Item number five, no, I'm sorry. Item number six, discussion and deliberation. Selection of a representative and an alternate for the multi-jurisdictional issues coordination forum. Madam Chair, we do not have any public comment cards on this item. The acceptance of public comment cards on this item is now closed. All right, Ms. Jacobs. Um, Madam Chair, this particular item um, comes before you this evening for you to um, discuss whether or not you would be interested in participating in the multi-jurisdictional issues forum committee. It is a committee that is comprised of approximately 40 different entities throughout Palm Beach County, some special districts as well as the school board, including South Florida Water Management District. And what it does is, is it discusses different multi-jurisdictional issues that affect um, all of the um, municipalities and other districts throughout the county um, is primarily, um, it's $1,000 per year and it's my understanding that we've already paid the $1,000 because we participate in another committee that is associated with 
this particular forum. Um, the issues that it is addressing at this particular time deal with transportation, housing, sea level um, rise, as well as hurricane disaster. They meet periodically um, once a quarter, and um, the staff is primarily made up of a consultant that is paid through the $1,000 per month that is um, given by each of those particular agencies. The committee is made up of elected officials. In the event that elected officials are not um, desired to or, or not selected to participate by a jurisdiction, the city manager could um, participate as well. And any um, of the elected officials that are designated to participate serve as voting members. All right. You said no public comment cards. So that's that is correct, Madam Chair. Do we have any questions or comments regarding this, Mr. McCoy? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Manager Jacobs, I you know, was really interested in trying to figure out the convention of this board, you know, the frequency of the meetings before I could um, possibly even entertain com committing or even nominating myself or any other person. While I think it's interesting, I did note that um, somewhere in this memorandum, it says the standing committee is comprised of planning directors. Now, my question is, is that standing committee the same as the <coughs> voting members? No, actually, that committee, um, and I read that as well, but what I did is I called the contact person <coughs> for the committee, and she clarified it. The planning directors are made up of another board um, that are, like, associated with this particular board. So... Um, from my understanding, Mr. Gagnon participates in that board. Mr. Gagnon, is that accurate? Could you come forward, please? So it's a board that is, a, or a committee that's associated with this board, even though um, this particular board is, I would say, is at a higher level. That one, the I part board is a level that, is a board that works up under this particular board in terms of carrying out certain issues that deal with our comp plan. Okay, would Mr. Um, so I, I see there's a tentative date of December the 11th for the, I guess the next quarterly meeting. Like, do we know like when that occurs? Is it during the, is there during the day? Is it during the evening? It's at two o'clock. From my understanding, all of the meetings will occur around two o'clock once a quarter. And where is it located? In Palm Springs. Is this a quasi-governmental board since it's comprised of elected officials from all over, such as subject to 119 and Sunshine Law? I would guess to say yes. Okay. Do we, well, that, that's all I have, Madam Chair, um, for now, but I was going to ask another question later, but you know, I don't know if I have enough interest, I mean, information to express interest in, you know, want to sit on, even though, you know, it definitely sounds um, very interesting. I don't want to, you know, commit myself to something that I'm, I don't have all the details on. Historically, Madam Chair, it's my understanding that the board started back in 1993. Um, it was a board that was primarily started by Palm Beach County, but considering all of the different ethics issues that arose, the board sort of um, became defunct. So just in the recent past, the last eight years, it has started to meet again. December 19. Madam Chair. Yes. Um, although the memo states that the meeting is tentatively scheduled for December 11, 2019, Ms. Yeski advised that the meeting is actually scheduled for December 19, 2019 in Palm Springs. Okay. And that's indicated in the background information that's on the agenda summary sheet. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah. All right, so is the board comfortable in moving forward with this now or waiting and, and getting more information and we can bring it back um, at another time? I know 2 p.m., I mean, I that would not be something that I could do, so it Something I, I mean, Mr. Like. Evans, obviously, or Ms. Jacobs <coughs> could be in one of our places if. But I thought it was at to be an elected official. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, it's from my understanding, it's their pleasure that it is an elected official. However, 
if an elected official um, does not participate, you can assign the city manager. And I think from my understanding and speaking to Mrs. Shesky, it's primarily a, a committee where they just um, generally discuss issues that may affect all of the other agencies, you know, simultaneously. Madam Chair. Yes. It sounds to me like a larger version of the meetings that uh, Hal Valachet has only extended to the rest of the county. I mean, when we meet with Hal Valachet as a county, we have representatives from all the municipalities that are in this particular area. Um, I mean, I'm happy to, you know, here we go. I'm really the only one who's got time on my hands. <laughs> and I don't mind serving if you um, would like to appoint. Um, I am particularly interested in some of the topics that they discuss, so. <clears throat> I nominate Pro Tem Botel. <laughs> Second. So do you need a regular and alternate? Yes, sir. <clears throat> she works too. Uh, I mean, not besides that. I mean, I do have a couple other committees that I am already on. Yeah. So um, if there is someone who um, is a risk taker and would like to put more on their plate, then feel free, Mr. McCoy. Um, it sounds like Mr. McCoy would like to be the alternate. I nominate Mr. McCoy. All right, Second. there you have it. You have Ms. Dr. Botel who wants to be the primary, and Mr. McCoy will be the alternate. Excuse, Madam Chair, yes. can we confirm the 2 o'clock because I have the Lincoln Field trip that day to the South Florida Science Center. I just want to make sure it's not in, in conflict with that. I should be back from the field trip by 2, but. No, Madam Chair, it is 2 o'clock. It is, okay. All right. So Mr. McCoy may need to be available at that point in time. And if there's, um, I guess going forward, if there's any conflict that neither the t neither one of you can attend, then maybe we can have Mr. Evans attend it. Well, I, I, I don't have a problem with being the alternate, but I need more information. So some, I guess, between the clerk and management, can we get some details on, you know, a little more than the memo? I know it's kind of explain something, but a little more information would be good. All right. All right, so you need the form of a motion for the two, um, or is are you good with that? Yes, Madam Chair, we right. now, now take a vote. Go ahead. Yep. Councilperson Lanier? Yes. Councilperson McCoy? Yes. Pro Tem Botel? Yes. Chair Miller Anderson? Yes. Unanimous vote. All right, board appointments, none. Discussion by city manager, we'll come back to that. And um, we'll start public comments, and we will keep it open until 7.30. And at 7.30, you can announce, make the announcement to close it off. All right, in the meantime. Public comments should be restricted to issues, matters, or topics pertinent to the City of Revere Beach. Please be reminded that the City Council has adopted rules of decorum governing public conduct during official meetings, which has been posted at the entrance of the Council Chambers. In an effort to preserve order, if any of, these, if any of the rules are not adhered to, the Council Chair may have any disruptive speaker or attendee removed from the podium from the meeting and or the building if necessary. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Um, Miss Claudine, can you put the timer up? I don't know if we have, for those that may have come in a little later, we have a new timer. Um, and basically the timer will kind of, the green section will kind of fade away as the time is being, is counting down. So I, I would caution everyone to keep an eye on that so that at the three minutes you are um, done with your comments. And I will read again the public notice because this is new putting this up here. Um, in accordance with the chapter 12, 12-23 of the city's code of ordinances, any person disturbed or disrupts any workshop or meeting held on city property shall see such action as determined and requested by the chairperson or majority of the board. Failure to do so is in violation of this section. Disturbing and disrupting actions includes offensive language, physical or threat of physical violence, repeated loud or boisterous behavior as determined by the chairperson or majority of the board. Any person failing to strictly heed such warnings immediately may be ejected from the meeting place for the duration of the meeting or for such lesser time as the presiding officer or a majority of the board may specify. 
All right, Madam Clerk. Earl Davis, Charisma Adams, Curtis Bunch. Earl Davis, Good 1001 evening. West 4th Street, uh, Rivera Beach. Uh, made a couple of notes, and uh, these notes was concerned with uh, Mr. Evans and uh, Bailey. It was at my home. I have two driveways, I mean two uh, drains in front of the east side of my driveway in front of my home. The large driveway, all the concrete around it is cracking, and when you drive across it, you can hear the concrete falling down in the water. Uh, Bailey been to my home about three times taking pictures and whatever. But anyway, when they was out there, Evans told Bailey how long this is going to take to get the contract over him. He said two weeks, and I think it's been about six or seven weeks. But I have to drive across it, backwards and forwards, sometime ten times a day, you know. And you guys don't know, this is very dangerous. And when the, tra when the traffic go across it at night, you can hear them when they hit it, it like it comes up and fall back down. I'm not going to threaten anybody, but God forbid if my wife and I is backing out and my car go down one side in it, we going to take some action on it, you know. So I don't know who to call anymore. I dealt with the city manager. I dealt with Bailey, and that wasn't a good idea. So I'm going to take a little further because I've been known to get the television people's out there and let them look at all this stuff because I, I've had it. I can't continue going. And your mayor, I called your office about three or four times and left a message. Your assistant left a message with her. I don't know what's wrong with you people. You know, I guess we're not important, but we're the cause of you sitting up there. You know, and it's just not fair. You guys don't call us back. And I haven't seen most of y'all. I haven't even seen you since the election. But before the election, my phone jumped off the table. And if you open the door real quick, you kiss some of y'all. You're trying to get you to vote for it. But you guys are pitiful up there. This is the worst of the worst. I've been with the city and crime watch and whatever over 40 years, and it ain't never been this bad. You can't get no phone calls. You can't get, oh, forget you guys. Y'all ain't going to do nothing no way. Anyway, I would like to say something there. Thanks to Ms. Jacob, uh, Inspector Williams, and Arthur Johnson over at Public Works. You guys do a good job. So far, we've been friends for a lot of years. You guys haven't lied to any of us yet. And so keep on doing what you do and what you can do for the seniors. Do it for us, please. We thank you so much. And so I don't know what y'all intend to do with this drain in front of my home, you know, but it's just pitiful. I can't call no one and say, come out and look at it because you had two of your top dogs out there. They ain't did nothing but lied to me. And so I don't know what y'all intend to do, but I'm going to take some legal action against that because it's very dangerous, very dangerous. Thank you. Yes. Charisma Adams, Curtis Bunch, Lloyd Brown. Miss Anthony, is the buzzer making noise? Because I can't, I'm not hearing it. It is. Okay. So you can it's hear really it? Can it's you hear? really low. I'm, I'm actually just looking at the timer. Okay. All right. Good evening, Chair. Good evening, Good evening Council, Mayor. Uh, Charisma Adams, 3018 Lower Ridge Circle. I just have a question. Um, what is the time frame for the director of finance and the city manager to execute the contract extension that was approved by resolution in August 2019 for the city's auditing services for the 2019 calendar year? So just for everyone, when you all come up, you make your comments, and then at the end of public comments, if there are answers to be um, given, they will be provided at the end of public comments. Thank you. Once we're finished, thank you. Thank you. All right. Curtis Bunch, Lloyd Brown, Bonnie Larson. Good evening. Good evening. C Curtis Bunch, 1557 West 35th Street, Riviera Beach. Um, I came here today to um, let you guys know about an all-star game I'm doing uh, in the city of Riviera Beach. It's to bring awareness to HBCUs. Uh, pretty much a lot of kids go to school and they can't go Division One playing sports, so I go to the big colleges, and um, I <coughs> put this up on you guys. Well, I gave it to the clerk, and she gave it to you guys. Um, it's just to 
pretty much bring awareness to HBCUs. Um, it's a football game between um, all the kids out of Palm Beach County, pretty much. I have some people that reached out to me that want to play there from Virginia, one person as far as Virginia want to come and play. So um, I'm doing this, and I would like to speak with you guys individually about it uh, to see where we can um, come make it, like I said, an experience, not just a regular game. Uh, I did reach out to the colleges. They will be sending me some literature, so the literature could be on hand about their schools. Um, and dealing with this with my son, when he graduated, um, the schools don't too much tell you about the HBCUs. Like, I found out the school he attends, Albany State, they gave him in-state tuition to attend Albany State. Um, and he, you know, he goes there right now, and it's, you know, very inexpensive. So I'm doing this just to, you know, one, I go to, I coach in a lot of all-star games, and Miami, Dade, Broward, Tampa, Tallahassee, they showcase their children. And here, we don't do the job like they do. And I say we because I'm a part of the, you know, I've been coaching in Riviera Beach for over 15 years since my son was six. He's 19 now. So I, I just want to, you know, do something to bring attention to, you know, the kids in Riviera Beach, you know, just not the bad things. Because when I go to different places, the different all-star games, I wear my Riviera Beach coaching shirt. And the first thing they said, you from Riviera Beach? Yeah, I'm from Riviera Beach. Oh, oh okay. We, like, nah, what you see is not what you get. So that, you know. Um, like I said, I would like to speak with you guys individually about this. If you can, my information is on the back page if I need to be reached. Um, so, and that's about it. All right. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Lloyd Brown, Bonnie Larson, Barbara, I'm going to mess this name up, Pamba Moda. How you doing? My name is Lloyd Brown. Lowe's man. Hey, it's a shame you put that fence over there, man. But don't worry about it, Lowe's man. That's not the only barrier that's over there. Your fence, only thing about your fence, you can see it. But there are barriers over there because I know when I go over there, and especially on holidays, I never want to go over there underneath the bridge because you will trip over those scuba tanks. You will trip over the, you, and then you know what? You'll be stopped at the gate. If you don't have a boat, you'll be stopped at the gate. But Lozman, the only thing about your barrier, it's obvious. You can see it. It's a fence. But there's another barrier over there. And every black person that live on my side know about it. And it seems like the barrier that you have over there is getting wider and wider. Because every time I look around, you're taking something away. You can jump over in our neighborhood and you can approve something, but anything over Singers Island, you say, oh no, we don't want it. You know where Lozman got his place at? I don't think he would keep us from out of there. I think he's trying to keep y'all from out of there. That's what the deal is. And then, you know, I, I could talk about a lot of things, like Stony Brook, I read when they evict these people or they tried, you know what? Y'all shouldn't even be sitting up there, you know, if you let this happen. Those people have been living there for the longest, and those people are part of the people that I am. I'm a felon, you know, at least that's what they call me. So a felon in Florida, I think two million of us, 200 million of us got the chance to vote. So I'm here for you if you wanna vote for me. Cause if you want somebody gonna do something and have the greater good of the neighborhood in their mind, you vote for me. I mean, the people we got up here now, you just wasting your time. We put y'all in there because we thought maybe we wanted Jonathan back. But you know what, we've been manipulated. And one thing about it though, I don't feel so bad because I ran out there and got votes for you because you know, I couldn't vote then anyway, but now I can. And there's about 200 million more people in Florida that can too, so I mean, you better look out on the next election. Don't just think it's gonna be a step in because you know, when the man asked me about Communication, you know, a failure for communication, that's because y'all need to get off, it ain't no bad word, get off your butt and get out there and meet the public and see what the public want. Don't go up here and just vote what you feel that's gonna make it because I don't think I want anybody coming in my neighborhood running my economy, my schools, and I mean, my jobs and whatever. I think I can do that. And I mean, for y'all to be up here, y'all just manipulating the people and you're not helping them at all. Thank you. 
What are Bonnie pub Larson. public comment cards? Madam Chair, the acceptance of public comment cards is now closed. Right. Bonnie Larson, Barbara, Barbara, Pam Bottle, Josephine Mulcahy. All right. Good evening. Good evening, Bonnie Larson. A couple comments about what happened tonight. Um, there was an article in the, in the paper maybe about two weeks ago and it was talking about the West Palm Beach commissioners and it said they were having a problem voting and getting enough information and then they said the staff doesn't always give them enough information, give them the full information. And I thought that's just like what happens in Riviera Beach. You don't always have the information. Now tonight you, you talked about the insurance policy. It expires on 12-15. Today is 12-4. So obviously it's already been approved before you even had time to talk about it or discuss it or, or whatever. Also, you mentioned the, I was wondering about that IT situation. Um, Ms. Botel, you mentioned our IT liability or payment went from 18,000 to 94,000, correct me if I'm wrong. I thought that's what you said, 18,000 it used to be and now it's 94,000. When the young lady was speaking, she said 18,000 to 37,000. Well, we know it went, had to go up a lot. So which is the correct amount? Also, um, the three minute timer. Who, who asked for that? <laughs> Why don't we ask the people who get up here and vote? This is very, very hard to understand. It's much easier if you got a, a minute and 15 seconds. This is, no, who, who invented that? Also, change line number two. There's a um, grammatical error in that. A little history. I'm glad you took off number whatever it was about the um, abandoning 13th Street, the old 13th Street. That's a Viking recommendation. Doesn't say that up front, but it's a Viking recommendation. And as a little history for those of you who may or may not know, Viking had down there on the marina property, they had a little, look how fast that thing is going. No, we want the numbers back. No, they had down there a little hotel, Yachtsman Inn. It's, that's, no, get the numbers back. That thing is just zooming around there. No, that's not right. Anyway, they had a little hotel down there. It was in derelict condition, so they had the audacity to ask the CRA to pay some of it to fix it up. We paid to fix up their property, okay? Then, I think we paid to have that building demolished. Then we paved it. Last time I heard, we paid $11,000 a month to them for the privilege of using that space for parking, and it's gone up since then, I'm sure. That was $11,000 a couple of years ago, a month. So, also the youth golfing, Ms. Lanier, you asked about that. There's a lot more to that story also. And if you're new on the council like several people are, you need to have the full history on it. There was a question about the money before. Now you asked tonight and they don't wanna give the money issue. Um, and that was an issue last time. So you need to be informed in order to make good decisions for all 34,000 of us. You need to have all the information, not just part of it. And that timer is running way too fast. Put the, put the minutes back on there again. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara Pombamato, Josephine McCulhey, Bruce Lacar. Good evening. Good evening. Chairperson, mayor, and council members. I'm from Rivera Beach Community Outreach. We are a small outreach at 1144 West 6th Street. Our flagship is our food pantry. But besides that, we have our uh, children's prosperity garden where the children from West Riviera work with the master gardeners and we have a garden. And twice a year they do the planting. And then the children get to watch it grow and to harvest what's in that garden. We also have our um, back to school program. We have our clothes closet. We have upward mobility bus passes. We have a middle school girls mentoring program. And this year we were able to get funding for that. We've been trying for two years. We were able to get funding for that from a private organization. So that is now in effect. We are working with the boys and girls clubs. It's for middle school girls only, the 11 to 14 <coughs> year olds. And um, Kennedy and Watkins are working with us for that. Uh, we have our Thanksgiving, our Christmas, 
and our fall festival and health fair that the city of Rivera Beach, various council people have helped us with before. This year for our Christmas program, we are really in need of help. We have more people registered than ever before. Every day, every week for our food program, we're serving upwards from 165 to 200 families. And those families are now looking for our help for the Christmas program. So that's taken us way above what we've had in the past as donations from various groups. But we have always had a donation from at least two council people at the city of Rivera Beach. And I recognize that all of you are new, so you may not know who we are. So we would love to have the opportunity to talk with you further about what we offer and the families that we serve. Thank you. Thank you. Those of you, she's calling out uh, like two, three, four names at a time so that we can have you kind of be on deck and ready to go as the next person is, um, as the first person is ahead of you is finishing. Josephine McColhey, Bruce L, Adam W. Okay, so Bruce, Bruce L. <laughs> good job trying. Uh, good evening, good evening. Uh, Madam Chairperson, uh, Mayor, um, and uh, Council Members. Uh, my name is Bruce Lockeruba, <clears throat> um, and Josephine, my partner, uh, got involved with the, the uh, Tenants Association a while ago. Um, I'm from Wellington and I pay taxes uh, to Palm Beach County. But uh, just a little bit of background, uh, I uh, was uh, State Director of Legal Services in New Jersey. I was uh, First Assistant Prosecutor of Sussex County and I was also Montague Township Attorney. And my question is this, uh, because Josephine has showed me some of these horrific pictures of the conditions that these tenants are living in. And uh, I'm just wondering, because when I was township attorney, uh, I certainly uh, would be asking my building inspector, what's going on here? How can these uh, conditions exist? Uh, there's black mold that's causing, as I understand the kids, to be brought to the hospital. Uh, there are rat infant infestations. And uh, again, uh, just as a concerned citizen, I'm just wondering what's going on and what the uh, elected uh, officials are doing about it. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Adam W. Crystal Lewis Alexander. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Adam Wasserman. Uh, I'm with the Palm Beach County Tenants Union. I uh, wanted to speak about Stony Brook Apartments. Uh, first, I wanted to start off by recognizing that today is the 50th anniversary of the FBI and Chicago PD's assassination of Fred Hampton uh, while he was sleeping next to his pregnant wife. And I bring that up because uh, the efforts of grassroots tenant organizers in Chicago, including King himself, um, are credited for the formation of HUD in the 1960s. Uh, so for a point in time, uh, HUD have, may have been a force for good, uh, but now with privatization through the RAD program and private-public partnerships, uh, it's become little more than a slumlord slush fund, uh, which is how it operates at Stony Brook, uh, but not exclusively, of course, not even for millennia, housing, which oversees hellish conditions on 200 other low-income housing complexes, uh, conditions that frequently make the local news if you check. Um, but millennia is just a symptom of a broader system. It's a system that rewards parasitic middlemen like them with and their investors with guaranteed recession-proof income regardless of how the tenants live. So to break this system, uh, the tenants of Stony Brook learned their rights, and they did what you, Councilwoman Julie Botel, claimed that you would do but never did, and that is to hold them accountable. 
And they did this by the only means they could, which is to withhold their rent until conditions are habitable, as they are legally entitled to do under Florida Statute Chapter 83. Uh, many have withheld their rent for 17 months, some for a year. Conditions have not been remediated. Nothing has changed. They're as bad as they've ever been in recent years, whether it's the toxic mold, asbestos, rats, roaches, you name it. Uh, so you would think with Millennia promising a $17 million renovation that they'd be willing to look the other way while like 80% of the property is not paying rent as a gesture of good faith. But Millennia never operates in good faith, a fact that you have yet to learn. Instead, after a series of protests last month, uh, Millennia retaliated by evicting eight of the key tenant leaders. They did so by ramming these evictions through in, the, in mass over the course of a week's time. Now, these families, for the crime of holding Millennia accountable, as you promised to do, Botel, could potentially be thrown out on the streets during the holidays. And so, speaking of the holidays, no amount of the turkeys that you give, no number of book bags or school field trips, no number of these token gestures that you give these kids can hide your complicity here. I'm gonna laugh. Thank you, Mr. Wasserman. <laughs> Crystal Lewis, Alexander, Fane Lozman. Good evening. Oh, good evening. I'm not excited to be here at all. Um, Botel, this message is specifically for you. Um, I've gotten seven police reports in the last past month for standing up. All of my property is being vandalized um, for the most part. My main concern is why did William Wale, who work under your boarding, deliver, hand deliver my eviction and then ask to work with me? 75% um, of us on the property is withholding rent, but everybody who come to my events to speak out, they get penalized and they get retaliated against. Um, I have eight evictions. You, you guys have to deliver like 35 more. I'm, I'm really taking over that property. And since you guys don't know what to do with it, I'll stay in charge until we um, receive victory. Meaning I went to the higher peoples um, over you guys' head, because it's always a boss over your boss. This whole time, none of you people been sincere. All of you is insincere. You've been deceitful. You lied to the peoples. You're collecting funds and everybody just enjoying themselves. Why the little black kids have to suffer and you go to single island side and you breathe good air and you live good. We want to do the same exact thing. I am sick and tired of marching down here and trying to get my point across. It's an urgent need. And y'all just, I don't know what y'all got going on. I mean, like how many times am I gonna have to march down here <clears throat> and express myself? I mean, it's gonna, you guys political game gotta come to an end. I mean, your mayor, he never have nothing to say. He always sweating bullets when we come in here. You know, I mean, he should because he was a preacher and you know what the kids is living in. This is why I'm so mad with you, man. You got in this chair and you just, you just turned us into nobodies, and I, I guess you're somebody. That's how you feel. Um, you, at the same time, I mean, you're disgusting. It is nasty to see that those tags was being removed by people's, which all artificial um, common sense. I mean, come on, y'all. Y'all got to do better than that. And you know better, Botel. We, we really want to hold your feet to the fire since you was the main spokesman for millennia. What do you have to say now? You have nothing to say. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all selves. Man, you too old for this game you playing, man. You gotta wrap it up, man. Well, listen, the people is more powerful than the people in powerful. Not now, we're, I'm gonna make sure we all vote. And I'm gonna make sure we don't vote for you anymore. I mean, you guys haven't been on the grounds of Stony Brooks yet. I'm not coming up here playing games with y'all no more. We are gonna get straight to the point. Take these evictions and make sure um, you do some good with them. I would say it, but I know that little message was, message was for me in the beginning. Evil, wicked. Thank you. <laughs> Alexander, Fane Lozman, Alan Schultz. Hello, I'm Alexander. Uh, you know, to reiterate, y'all should definitely be ashamed of yourselves. 
You guys are constantly pushing bogus agendas here, and you're not pushing agendas that actually matter for the tenants living here. So I'm going to read this out to you because you need to be reminded. I'm going to read it out loud. We have these nice uh, pamphlets that we printed out. Danger. Millennia housing management is deemed unsafe for children, seniors, black people, and humanity. Under Section 821-1831 of Justice Code of the Palm Beach County Tenants Union, it is unethical for any person, business, agency, or elected official to have business dealings with this company, and that's Millennia. Building Division, Stony Brook Apartments as well. Um, it says Building Division, Stony Brook Apartments, the people united in solidarity. Any unauthorized person removing the sign will be deemed a fool. And all you guys are fools. I have more to say. <laughs> quit harassing the tenants. For anyone who is concerned, please quit harassing the tenants. The actions of Millennia are illegal. The owners of Millennia should be held accountable for their lack of concern for the health and well-being of children and tenants at Stony Brook. They should be held accountable. And for every moment the talk is ticking, you guys are responsible, and you're not taking any responsibility for that. And you need to take responsibility. The property of tenants who have also been um, threatened for eviction have been vandalized. And this is a clear indication of corruption from the management of millennia. And that's something that you guys are responsible for as well, because you are in collusion with them. We know all of these shady tactics. We see them very clearly right in front of us. We demand that you end your collusion with Millennia and that you support the tenant union with their endeavors to begin and continue managing Stony Brook with the work of dedicated tenants. I've seen the work of tenants. I don't know if you've taken the time to see the work of the tenants, but they're putting in work and they're building a plan and they have ideas that are people, people are putting into work and you are standing in the way from, from them achieving the things that they want. So don't do that. You don't have to. You have a choice. The tenants union plans are much more concise and get to the root of the issues. And like I said, you're standing in the way. So you have a choice today. You can get out of the way and you can help the tenant union in their endeavors to, to remove the building and to also you know, trace the funds and remove the funds from the hands of those who are greedy and who do not care about the conditions in Stony Brook. Don't care that children have to live with long-term conditions of bad health. So just think about that. I don't know how you guys get sleep at night. Thank you. Bane Lozman, Alan Schultz, Doretta Polk. Bane Lozman, yesterday was a very big day in my life. When I won my Supreme Court case a year and a half ago, the Supreme Court sent it back to the Court of Appeals to decide what should be done next. Yesterday, the Court of Appeals issued an order and sent it back to the district court judge. That means there's either going to be a new trial or he made his rule as a matter of law that I win. What does that mean to the city? That means to the city I got a $900,000 legal bill right now. And based on the fact that this has dragged on for 12 years, based on the fact that Botel and Miller Anderson again violated my First Amendment rights by arresting me in April because they didn't like the content of my speech, you could have what's called a multiplier. My $900,000 in legal fees could be multiplied by two and a half times. I could, the judge could award $2.4 million because you guys just don't believe in the First Amendment. You continue to retaliate against me, whether it's arresting me, whether it's uh, uh, having Gagnon not give me an address, not letting my black friends go to the beach with me. We had to file two lawsuits that we won, uh, taking away my development rights. You are exposing the cities for millions and millions and millions of dollars because with, with Botel and Gagnon came running in there and said, let's do this thing. I didn't hear Miller Anderson, who's been to my property twice, by the way. I didn't see Lanier, I didn't see Lawson, I didn't see McCoy come forward and say, hey, let's do something. She just sits there and smirks. Well, let's talk about what we can do with the anger that we have about Stony Brook. We have grounds to recall Botel, okay? Lady March was fired because Gagnon and Mr. Botel Wilson, turn said, this way, please. because Gagnon and Botel said, we do not want those red tags on your units. Take them down. She was fired. We have a statement of grounds. We can all go out, hundreds of us, get the signatures, put on the ballot, and recall Botel. 
That's how we can channel the energy. Lady March Goldwire was fired. She went unit by unit and said, this unit should be condemned, asbestos and mold, unsafe. Gagnon said, listen, I don't want you to do that. He threatened her. He threatened over my fence. He threatened over another guy's dock. When she said, no, I have an autonomous job to do. You can't tell me what to do. They fired her, OK? We have grounds to recall Botel. Botel, the smirking lady right there, was a key part of that puzzle. Gagnon right there was a key part of that puzzle. We can channel your anger to get rid of some of these people up here and get people that believe in the rule of law, people that are not going to break the law. We should take our city back, and we can do it with the manpower from Stony Brook. I've, been, I've gotten rid of a lot of corrupt officials in my life, half a dozen. Okay, we can certainly get rid of Botel. It's not a big deal. We already have Botel for malfeasance by telling the city manager to go to DEP and pull a guy's permit. That's violative of Section 5 of the Charter. We can take our city back. Recalling Botel is a place to start. Thank you. Alan Schultz, Doretta Polk, Margaret Shepard. Alan Schultz, uh, Riviera Easy. Beach. Boy, Julie, your name came up a lot tonight. Going to come up some more. <laughs> anyway, um, I've still not been paid. I had to hire a lawyer. You're going to hear from him. We're going to probably have to litigate it. What a waste of money. Waste of time. You know I did the work. So does, you know, your partner in crime, Mr. Evans. I had the most bizarre email exchange with him today that I was going to talk about something totally different, but I'm going to talk about my email exchange with Mr. Evans today. So about to, you know, back in September time frame when he let me go, even though he didn't tell me he's letting go, he told Julie he's letting me go, and I've heard about it secondhand, he writes a note saying that, you know, he needs, we need to do the right thing with Mr. Schultz, but that never happened. So I filed uh, four different requests for public records. For Mr. for Mr. Evans' emails. Last night, I sent out a reminder to uh, the site on the city uh, website uh, asking for an, a second update, because I've already asked for another update 30 days ago. So now it's eight weeks since I've been informed about my request for his emails. So <clears throat> I write to him this morning. Actually, it was at... Uh, 2.33 p.m. today. Eight weeks. What's going on here, Mr. Evans? If I do not receive the requested emails immediately, I plan to file a formal complaint with the Florida Attorney General, Ashley Moody. Clearly, we need to get to the bottom of this. He writes me back, Mr. Schultz, this is at uh, 3 p.m. The clerk's office is the department that processes public records requests. In other words, he doesn't know anything about this. I do not get Q alerts. He does get email, though, I think. Hence, why I'm not aware of your request, I'll have Mrs. Robinson assist in processing your request. Well, the reason I talked about emails is because I then forwarded him at uh, 331, say, not true, Mr. Evans. Note the activity comments below that the city sent me. It says, the customer emailed requesting a status of his request, again, remember, eight weeks now, for his emails, four different requests. I sent an email to, to IT, also copied city manager Jonathan Evans. Oh, OK. So then the next email he comes back to me and said, uh, Mr. Schultz, IT needs to clarify the Q alert process. In other words, he's a Boy Scout. Nothing bad's happened here. It's those guys in IT, those son of a guns. I've never accessed the system. More information, inter information the clerk office can, should have been processing requests in seven days. Seven days, he says. That matter will be addressed. So I write him back. Thank you. You get the point. No Boy Scout here. Neither Botel or yeah. her complicit. Uh, Doretta Polk, Margaret Shepard, Ernestine Gordon. Good evening. I was just looking. Oh, good evening. My name is Doretta Park. I'm a resident of Riviera Beach, and it's a wonderful thing that Mr. Nose came up and said that he didn't need any funds for 
the city of Rivera Beach. They bought the property on bid through the CRA, and they will be completing whatever they have to do for the golf for the children. And that's wonderful because when the developers come in here and want money from the city, we need every cent we have to do get a new water plant, construction of these roads. So I applaud him, and it's on the uh, tape that he doesn't need any funds from Rivera Beach. And I applaud him for doing that and doing it for the children of Riviera Beach. Another thing, there's a substation right there off of uh, uh, H Avenue and 20th. I've talked about this before. The stench, you can smell it. It's uh, from the sewer, a little substation. It's come back, and it's come back with a vengeance. Those people who live right there in that area in the corner, I don't know how, how they're... You're talking about Stony Brook. I don't know how they're really living there because it is, the stench is so bad. And can we please do something about that? Because I go the other way to even come to my home. Um, and no, we do not need to abandon uh, 13th Street. That's one of our main quarters going into the marina, and we definitely need that. We do not need to just give that land away. We need that. Uh, Another thing. Oh, the shot detectors. They're supposed to have shot detectors uh, around the city of Riviera Beach. On Avenue G and 19th Street, there was a shooting. And uh, those shot detectors did not go off to notify the police to come immediately. Neighbors had to call the police. And I think how many other shot detectors are not working properly in the city of Rear Beach. And if we can uh, find that out and get that, because the wires from that, that shot detector, what I'm uh, speaking of, the wires are still pulled. So I know it's no repair has been done, because that's been like that for uh, over a year, over a year. And we think thinking that it's working and it's not. This is a detrimentary for the citizens of Riviera Beach when we think we have the protection and that uh, the police will be there uh, as soon as possible to help with whatever tragedy that's going on. And I thank you very much. Thank you. Margaret Shepard, Ernestine Gordon. Ms. Shepard, is she not here? Ms. Shepard? No, she's, she's gone. gone. Okay. Ernestine Gordon, Grant Black, Yolanda White. Good evening. Good evening. The chairperson, the council, the mayor, and the system manager. Good evening. I'm here tonight talking to reference to the, the stoves. We'd like to have the stoves uh, change. We want some feedback on that. And I'll be honest with you. When I was here before, I had so many people to come and talk to me when they see me in the store and say, I know exactly what you mean, Ms. Gordon. When, we, when you sleep and you awaken, you can't go back to sleep. These stores need, the hours need to be changed. When I was out there doing the recall, and I did a heck of a lot of them, first thing came out of those people's mouth, why don't y'all do something with those stores, with the hours? Over three-fourths of the people that I, I uh, prepared their paperwork said something about them stoves. You know, I'll be honest with you, a lot of them came to the conclusion that y'all evidently the people are not more important after we put you up here. The, the stoves are in charge. Seem like the stoves have their hands in your pocket, so therefore we can't get anything done. So I'm going to ride this horse until we get some changes done. Because those people in them stores do not live in this area. We live here. When we want to rest at night. And we want those hours change. That store on 33rd Street and that Michelle and that tag of food store, it's so done. Filthy need to tear it down. That's a dirty store anywhere. Those stores hours need to be changed. And we're not going to stop because if you don't change them, you won't be back up there. They told me to throw that out there to you. Thank you. Thank you. Grant Black, Yolanda White, Cindy March. 
All right, Good Grant evening. Black, Palm Beach County Tenants Union, uh, board, mayor, madam chair. Um, I'm not gonna even do the three minutes because I'm not gonna waste my time trying to appeal to anyone's humanity because I'm not sure you guys have any left. Um, if I were to, I would ask you guys to bring your families out to Stony Brook, stay for a week and explain to them why you can't do anything for the people that are just trying to stand up for their rights and they're trying to take care of their families. And while a company from Cleveland comes down and fleeces the property for $2 million a year, they're making $2 million a year on that property. How is anybody making money on that? And, and to just let that happen and then to let them retaliate and, and put these evictions on people. Like it's not, It, I don't know, it's crazy. I'm not even trying to understand it anymore either because it's, it's just dumb. But um, the time for diplomacy and talking about this is long past. Everybody's starting to feel that way. And we don't really expect you guys to do anything. We've been up here so many times. Um, I don't know if anybody expects you guys to do anything, um, but all I have to say is just that, like, I don't know, it's, I can't even say shame on you because you don't have shame. I can't do any of that. Like, all I can say is that, like, you know, there, it, if there was any justice in this world, you, it was, it'd be you and your families living there. And not these people. They've done nothing to deserve this. All right, whatever. Thank you. <laughs> Yolanda White, Cindy March, Judith D. Verger. Good evening. Um, good evening. Uh, my name is Yolanda White, and I live in Stony Brooks. I'm terribly nervous right now. The uh, adrenaline is like taking over my thoughts. But I'm up here because I'm fighting for my rights and my life. So I just had to stand up and take a stand. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Cindy March, Judith Diverger. Rodolfa Plancarti. Good evening, Council. My name is Cindy March. It's deplorable, it's despicable. You all need to be exposed so you all can be disposed because this is utterly ridiculous. And I want to know if you can answer the question later. I might not be here, but I'll go look at it on TV. Do you all have a gag order where you all cannot speak on the behalf of Stony Brook residents? I, that's what I want to know, number one. Botel, you think everything is sarcastic. It's not. I told you, I'm not the only one calling you out with this bribery with these turkeys and these little Easter egg hunts that you're giving our kids. Let me let you know something. We've been free a long time ago. So where you're trying to take these people in Stony Brook, it's shameful on you. You will be called out. That laugh one day will be a frown. Whether I be on this earth to see it or not, Carmen is real. God is real, okay? One day, go over there in Stony Brook and live and see how you hop back over on Sing Island within 30 seconds. It's utterly ridiculous. And whoever went and took them tags off when they was on there, I know about it, okay? I heard about it. I was called when it happened. Gagnon, you need to be held responsible. Sherman, you need to be held responsible. They haven't called your name in a long time. And you're the finance man. You know how to find the money and put it everywhere where it needs to go to satisfy your need and the big developers' need. Once again, I will reiterate the big developers, just like cold storage, they came over here and got what they wanted. They got some fees waived. And then they had the grand open by two or three weeks later. It's going to come, and y'all be able to connect the dots. When you go to your depositions again for different cases, don't go over there and lie.
Please don't. This young lady here, this young lady here one day, oh, the people from Belglade. Let me tell you something about Belglade. So let me just clarify Belglade, because I had an event over there a few years ago. Them people show pleasantries. It's yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, can I help you? It's not let me turn my bike. You understand me? So it's the difference between Belglade and St. Island. Okay? Everything last going to be first, and everything first going to be last, and everything else going to be caught up. Botel, you will be caught up. And I will walk with you all. I will go door to door for a recall because I interact with a whole lot of people. Because I was once one of them people in the street, walking Rosemary and Tamerlan, and had on lost my mind. I am one of them. My story is somebody else's glory. And I'm not ashamed from where I come from because I try to treat people the way I want to be treated. You fried my niece later, gold why? A lot of it was personal vendettas between Gagnon, between um, Gagnon, between Kashama, Botel, Deirdre, and Evans was up the road and he probably told y'all to fire. You ran on that. Fire later, go why? And bring back Evans. Did you not? We have the flyers. Thank you. Judith, Judith Diverger, Rodolfo Plancarti. Is Judith here? Judith? All right, who's next? Rodolfo Plancarti. Good evening. Rodolfo Plancourt, um, Derry Beach, Florida. Um, good evening, council members, ma mayor, co chair. Um, I believe in karma. I had a tough week, but it's, it was a good week. My mother got her kidney transplant, and I told my mother, you know why you got the kidney transplant? Because we help people. We try to help those in need, and we're, we're simple people. We're not extravagant, like Mr. Bowtie over there. Um, so, you know, all the little vest. So, anyway, so, yeah. Karma is going to come after you, Bortel, and the rest of you, sooner or later. We all pay the price, because I have sinned, and I paid that price. Anyway, so Stony, tenants, Stony Brook tenants, after protest at a Palm Beach courthouse, received eviction notice. Even Stony Brook tenant leader, Crystal Lewis, uh, was targeted, which is an illegal retaliation. We have laws in this country to respect, and millennia feels that they abstain from following the law. The City Council of Rare Beach has enabled millennia companies to continue violating code and state law, thus are responsible as well. Millennia Company does not give a care, obviously, of Rivera City residents, as you heard today. When will this council understand that? So Millennia Company has a slumlord reputation, not only in the state, but at the national level. That makes news. Oh, and thank you for the news coverage um, these last two weeks. And, and if you Google Millennia Companies, you could find issues with them in Kansas, Florida, New York. So, you know, these are big states. So, thank you for the news coverage. Um, so, state politicians and media are finally putting the pieces together of how the slumlord operates its apartment complexes. Yet the city council sides with millennia companies. There was even talk about, hmm, I heard a federal investigation might take place. <coughs> so do you really want that on your record, city council members here? Because that won't look good at all. Um, in return, we are here once again, people from Miami, um, different cities, Wellington, Boynton, Rivera Beach um, residents. And we will continue to be here to put pressure on you. And we also activated our national network to put pressure millennia companies. So, Ms. Patel, one of your friends targeted me on Facebook. You sent your rats Thank from you. single islands. Thank you. To attack me. Up, I don't appreciate that. Madam Chair.
Madam Chair, that concludes public comment. All right, thank you. Um, Ms. Jacobs, if there are some questions that were posed that you have an answer for at this time, um, you could share them at this time. If there are some questions that were posed that were not, we don't have the answers for at this time, then we will make sure that we get the card of the person and then we can get back to them with the answer. Sure, Madam Chair, um, there were some questions that um, I can get with respect to staff persons on tomorrow to go over. Um, Mrs. Larson um, made an inquiry in regards to the, um, the agenda items not being complete. Um, in the last month, Mr. Evans asked that staff start developing memos to be a part of those of our agenda items in a, um, an effort to make sure that they contain more information. Um, I can also share with him and the staff that maybe we could do better with making sure that they're more thorough. But that was one of the efforts that was put in place in effort to try to be more um, comprehensive with regards to the information that we share with the public and the council. The other items are items that I'll get with staff on tomorrow. All right. Um, the Mr. Davis, Earl Davis mentioned about a driveway. That's, yeah, I've seen that those one. emails going back and forth. Okay. That's one I'll get with um, Mr. Evans and okay. Mr. Bailey on tomorrow. All right, and then the, um, I think with the Wells situation over there by Wells and the H Avenue on 20th Street, I do believe they addressed that at one time, but we can get some information. You may have a little more that you can get from the utility district department. I will, and I'll share it with they, you, Mrs. Yeah. Polk. As well as, yeah, I have that as well in the lift station with the stent, right? Right, okay. right. And then the operation hours, um, I know Ms. Gordon mentioned that regarding the hours of operation from the stores. I know, I think you may have mentioned something about that, so we'll check in, in terms of um, where we left off with that? Yeah, and actually that's been, I'm sorry, Madam Chair, that's been a universal issue. Um, mm -hmm. The law department is working with city administration as well as code enforcement to try to figure out a way maybe we can come up with some type of nuisance program in order to work with the hours of those stores and the issues that come along with them. So it is on the radar and we clearly understand as a matter of fact, I think even as late as Tuesday, we met on it again. All right, and then also um, the young lady mentioned about the audit. I saw that. Um, so Adams. you'll yeah, right. I'll so check. you'll follow up with her yes, as well on those. Okay. Um, all right, that's it for the public comment answers on that, Ms. Jacobs. All right, do we have any discussion by the city manager? Um, Madam Chair, there's an item that I was asked to read into the record. It deals with the city's participation in Census 2020. Um, Census 2020, City of Riviera Beach Complete Count Committee, April, 20, April 1st, 2020 is National Census Day in the City of Riviera Beach. Needs your help in serving on the Census 2020 Complete Count Committee. Please join us for the Complete Count Committee kickoff meeting on Thursday, December 12th, 2019 at 5.30 p.m. in the City Council Chambers, located at 600 West Blue Heron Boulevard, Riviera Beach, Florida, 33404. Since its participation directly affects the amount of federal funding allocated to our community, we need your thoughts, ideas, and suggestions on how to best reach our residents, especially individuals who may be difficult to contact. Again, all are welcome to join us for the Complete Count Committee kickoff meeting on Thursday, December 12, 2019 at 5.30 p.m. in the City Council Chambers. For additional information, please contact the Development Services Department at 561-845-4060. Thank you. All right. Discussion by City Attorney? No discussion. All right. City Council Committee reports. Statements by the Mayor and City Council. Let's we'll start with the Mayor. Yes, um, first I would like to apologize to Mr. Earl Davis, my chief of staff. I know he's not here, but um, I take pride in getting in contact with um, the citizens that call me. She did leave a, a message for me on the 26th of November to give you a, a call, so I apologize for that. Secondly, I, I want to address, and I know we're limited in addressing it. Um, number one, I'm not sweating 
um, no time that Stoner Brooks comes in here. I, I have a lot to say that I know I can't say, but you know, we are new elected, uh, um, a lot of us are new elected officials and we have a lot on our, our, our plate. This has been going on for years. Um, I just hope we can do something about it. Uh, I won't go in too far into it, but um, I, I commend you guys for um, standing up to it. But we know that it's a bigger issue than us. It's a community issue, it's a church issue, it's a state issue, it's a county issue. And so um, I just hope we can all come together to, to get this past us. Thank you. All right, Dr. Botel. Thank you. <clears throat> um, just a, a quick note about the census. Um, they're paying seventeen fifty an hour to be a census taker, and if you're interested, uh, you can apply online at 2020census.gov slash jobs. So it's an opportunity for people to make a little extra money and also be sure that we participate in the census. Um, a few announcements. As, as I said earlier, when Palm Beach State College was here, Tuesday of next week is the last time to make an application to be a part of that class. It's a business <laughs> specialist, CCC. You come away with 12 credits, college credits. It's completely free if you qualified for assistance, including the books. So all I can do is urge you to take advantage of this. It's the first time that the college has offered coursework right here in Riviera Beach, and it's, it's like being delivered to us. So please, please take advantage of that. Uh, December 11th is the last date to make contributions to the uh, Palm Beach County Management, Jupiter Mama's toy drive. All of the toys uh, that are dis that are donated to that drive will be given to children in Riviera Beach. And I just received an announcement from them that they'll be distributing those toys on December 21st. And uh, we've been planning a mistletoe madness event for the 21st. Hopefully, if we get Mr. Evans, who's watching, I know, um, I believe, uh, if we get his approval, we'll hold it right here in City Hall and we'll have gingerbread houses and cookie decorating and now we'll have the toy distribution. I have a form for parents to fill out. It says parents who need assistance with gifts for their children can use our, this is from the uh, Jupiter Mamas, can use our pre-registration form, see attached, I'll put this on the city's website. This form can be emailed, faxed, texted, or hand delivered to our offices, that's the PB management people in Lake Park. Contact information is on the form. We will then contact the parents with the time and location for the pickup, which we hope will be here at City Hall on December 21st. Um, December 12th, there's the, D, the DOS Craft Beer on Singer Island is having the 12 Guitars of Christmas. Again, this is the Toys for Tots toy drive. These toys are not necessarily earmarked for Riviera Beach children, but we hope that some of them will end up in our community. Uh, I think that's it. R Friends of Riviera Beach Schools is collecting also for Christmas, and they can be reached at, uh, uh, the, look, look, on my, look on my Facebook page. We'll have something on there. I think that's it. Thank you. All right, um, Councilman McCoy. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I wanna actually take the opportunity to kind of respond to a few things. First, uh, Madam Chair, please pass me my computer back so I can <laughs> take that back with me. I wasn't gonna take it home. <laughs> okay, um, in response to, um, I, I know the manager mentioned it, uh, Manager Jacobs mentioned the um, concern regarding the convenience stores. And yes, we did meet yesterday um, with um, code enforcement, the building department, also law enforcement to address those issues. But, you know, it's not as simple as, you know, sending, sending the stores a letter and saying you have to close. So they're vested. So we have to take a different approach. But rest assured, this is a problem that I receive complaints about every day. And I've asked staff to to direct the police department to be a little more assertive when people are loitering and hanging outside of convenience stores and to look to seeing if we can adopt a program similar to West Palm Beach um, that they did in the month of October, such as the uh, operation cleanup for, you know, disabled vehicles, abandoned vehicles and trash and things uh, around our public establishment. So this is something certainly in the works. And I spoke to Mr. Evans about, you know, we're gonna be trying to look at, you know, bringing some language and some teeth into our nuisance abatement code so that we can address these issues. Because uh, I would agree that the convenience stores do present a problem and, you know, it makes it very difficult. Even I was out for this morning leaving Denny's and I just passed by convenience stores and as cool as it was, I still seen people loitering and hanging out. So that's a problem for me. And trust me, I am making sure that we are um, addressing it 
so that we can do it from a holistic approach and try to figure out um, the best way. And, you know, I, I did remind police departments that, and, you know, they reminded us that they have ongoing investigations, but I did remind them about, you know, things that are currently in our code, such as the restriction on alcohol sales at the 2 a.m. So this is something that we are working on, and I think um, it, it's gonna take some time for us to get there. Um, the next thing is, uh, Manager Jacobs, you mentioned there was gonna be a follow-up regarding audit services. Follow-up to who? Because I was curious as to what we were doing with that as well. No, um, Madam Chair, actually, I, I don't think that's what I said. It, I said I would follow up with Mr. Evans and the procurement director to see what direction we were going in with regards to the audit services contract. Okay, well, I, I'll certainly be asking to um, when Mr. Evans returned, do you have any update on the security guard services um, that I think came through somewhere around that time? No, sir, I'm sorry, I don't. Okay. All right, um, all right, lastly, I wanted to probably take the opportunity to remind everyone that the CRA is putting on the second annual Winter Wonderland this Friday, December the 6th at 6 o'clock p.m. at the Marina Promenade, and the tree lighting ceremony will start at 7 o'clock, so please, if you're available, um, it's a family and family oriented event so love to have you and I'll certainly be there I don't think I'll be dressed up as Santa Claus but I'll mm -hmm. I'll be there so <laughs> thank you madam chair all right councilwoman Lanier um, I'd just like to say that that same day on Friday December 6th uh, that day at the marina they're having a health and wellness fair for the community so that people who want to uh, get more information about everything from housing to um, first time home buyers to um, sexual health to health services, insurance services, anything that has to do with uh, trying to live. <laughs> um, they're gonna be talking about mostly, um, it's being put on by the Florida Department of Health and um, a couple of the health service centers in uh, Palm Beach County and in Riviera Beach. The focus is on, of course, is on HIV AIDS, um, of course, you know, uh, Florida leads the nation in the number of new cases. Uh, here in South Florida, we are number one. Um, a lot of the cases come out of Riviera Beach. So we have to be very, very vigilant in terms of getting ourselves tested. December 1st was World AIDS Day. You have to get yourself tested because once you get tested, you'll be able to live a basically a normal life. But people who don't get tested end up at the hospital and that is when um, people become sick and they are more infectious. If a person is HIV positive and becomes undetectable, it is unlikely that they will pass the virus on to someone else. So it is very serious uh, in terms of sexual health. The health department had 400 new syphilis cases. So in terms of health and sexual health, uh, I think that is very important that we look at that and that we take care of that. So on Friday, December 6th, we will be having a health and wellness uh, fair to address those issues among others. Thank you. All right, and with that, um, I don't have any comments tonight, so. Um, um, Madam Chair, yes, I do. I wanted okay. to, I didn't, I couldn't see around the pole. Mm -hmm. um, our, the city has um, hired a new HR director, oh, and I okay. wanted to introduce her. All right. You can come on up to the podium so everyone can see you. Her name is Rosalind Dickinson. And Rosalind, you can tell the, the council and the mayor a little bit about yourself and the public as well, please. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be at the city of Riviera Beach. Most don't know this, but I do have some connections, summers, spent summers here with family, so it's a pleasure to serve. Um, I have over 15, 20 years of HR experience, do have some local government experience, specifically City of Lakeland, City of Fort Lauderdale. I, you know, am 
anxious, excited to bring some leadership to the city and help us move forward from a people um, strategy perspective. I look forward to meeting each of you and making a huge impact while here. Thank you so much and welcome. Thank you so much. Right. With that, we stand adjourned.